3D Studio Max is or not familiar with 3D Studio Max at all? I mean, I assume... Um, it, I'll give it a quick, quick, oh. quick intro, sure. <clears throat> so, uh, 3D Studio, uh, looking at 3D Studio Max here, uh, this is uh, obviously a, a content creation tool used by a number of game studios to create their the 3D assets you know, for their game. Uh, between 3D Studio Max and Maya, uh, it kind of encompasses uh, most of the market in terms of uh, tools uh, you know, used by game studios. Um, so 3D Studio Max, it's, it's a fully extensible environment. Uh, you can add your, uh, insert your own, your own module type thing into it. So we've added our PhysX menu here. You can see we support, uh, at this time, rigid bodies, constraints, uh, ragdolls, and Apex clothing. We'll be focusing on Apex clothing today. Uh, we've also added a PhysX toolbar uh, over here on this side. So you can see it's a full integration. Uh, as far as the artist knows, it, it's really not that much different than uh, what, what they would expect of a 3D Studio Max. So what we're looking at here is an asset from an upcoming game title. Uh, the title hasn't been announced yet, so I can't say exactly who it's from, but uh, they were kind enough to, to let us use, use their animation and uh, show uh, exactly <coughs> the, the power of Apex clothing. So what, what I'm going to do here is go ahead and start the animation. And you can see great motion capture, but look how static the clothing is. It doesn't move, it's not very lifelike, not dynamic at all. So what we want to do is add clothing to, the, to this particular model. <clears throat> so this model has actually been um, uh, totally dialed in by an artist to support clothing. And um, so I can quickly show you the actual clothing animation here directly in 3D Studio Max. So you can see how much more lifelike and, and dynamic you know, this figure is um, in a fight with, with actual clothing uh, simulated in, in this way. So you can imagine the games going forward, having characters you know, with, with this type of simulation on them, it's just going to be a more compelling game experience. So what we're going to do here is actually walk through the process quickly of creating this type of clothing. Uh, so this is the exact same model here. I've just kind of I've removed the uh, the clothing uh, parameters from it, and I can go ahead, go ahead here and, and play uh, back the same physics simulation. Again, you can see it's very very rigid, static playback. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna turn this uh, coat right here into clothing. Simple as going to Apex Clothing and create clothing. You can see we highlight it here with this yellow mesh. And I can go ahead and play clothing. And yeah, while the coat is is a little more lifelike, a little more dynamic, it falls off his body. You can see this is because the game developer didn't actually model the parts of his body uh, that weren't really intended to be seen. Uh, you know, this is obviously to save resources and performance in the game. So we, we have a couple of techniques for dealing with these type models. So first, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to turn off this physical mesh wire that shows us the physical clothing mesh. And <clears throat> so I need to, uh, what I need to do is, is tell the clothing uh, particles not to move. So we have our first technique for doing that is something we call uh, max distance. So this is the max distance that, that a particle is allowed to move. So if I turn on the visualizer for this, you can see that each vertice in this particular mesh has a max distance that it can move. But we don't want all of these vertices to move that far. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to flood this whole mesh with the value of zero for the max distance. So that goes away, and again, I, go and I, I can play this back. You really can't tell that clothing's on here because clothing particles aren't allowed to move at all. So then what I need to do is go in and paint specifically on this model exactly the distance that I want these things to move. So the first thing I'm going to do is hide his pants, because the pants kind of obscure some of the, uh, some of the jacket here. Uh, I'm going to select this item. I'm going to go set up a paintbrush to paint, uh, like a flat brush. And about 10 centimeter brush is, is a pretty decent size. Uh, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start off by painting a, a value of 20 centimeters for the distance that I'd like it to move. So paint. And literally, you just come on here and paint the values. Oops, his, his elbow there to maybe do that. You paint the value, or the artist will come in and, and paint the values that they want uh, this object to be. 
So all these particular vertices will move about 20 centimeters. Go through the here to be realistic. Now, uh, because of the way this model is created, I don't want the back to move this much, so I'm actually going to go in here and maybe paint this a little bit more, more like 10 centimeters. Kind of up his back. Kind of restrict the movement a little bit on that. And then what I want to do is come in here and smooth it out a little bit. So you can see it's, it's pretty spiky. So I'm going to come in here and just kind of create a smooth transition to really make the clothing simulation a lot more natural. So we've got a nice kind of straightforward animation there. Um, zoom back out and let's go ahead and bring the pants back in. And then go ahead and play the simulation again. So boom. And now we've got the clothing actually staying on his shoulders. But you can see here, it's kind of falling through his pants. Not exactly what we intended here. So our second <coughs> technique for dealing with that is something called, uh, uh, within here we call it backstop, but it's also known as animation uh, a collision, or animation collision. So th this is actually colliding the uh, clothing particles <coughs> against the animated jacket. So we can say, don't move far from the original animation. So. Just to do this quickly, I'm going to backstop. Um, I'm going to go and flood again this backstop channel with zero. Oops, smoothing it. There we go. So that flood that whole channel with zero. So basically, it's not going to move backwards against the animation. It can still move out and, and around uh, using the max, dist max distance we painted earlier, but the backstop is going to prevent it from going through his pants uh, that we were seeing earlier. So turn it off this visualizer and we can play it again. Suddenly, you can see it a lot more realistic. Very easily print that. So, let's show that. So, um, you can still see it's penetrating his pants here. And so this becomes a problem in really dynamic models. You get this clothing penetrating the pants. So we want to actually do something quickly about that. So what we can actually do, we have our ragdoll character up here. And this represents... This represents the actual jo uh, uh, joints and bones that are that, that are part of, of this particular body. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab a couple of these, these bones that have been tied together. What I want here is the left up leg and the right up leg. I'm going to grab those and go to wireframe mode so we can actually see it. So you see these two orange bones in here. These are collision volumes that were automatically created from the bones on the rig's character. So this isn't big enough for the actual collision. So what I want to do is quickly go in here. I'm going to blow up the, the size of that considerably, make it a bit longer, and then go reposition it. Make sure it's in, in, in the correct place to prevent penetration. And feel free to ask questions um, anytime. This is what a typical artist would do when they're creating the yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it, they would tip, they, they're typically a little more precise than I'm going to be in this uh, in this demo. But um, yeah, this is the exact workflow they would use. So on the left leg, we'll go and do the same thing. Is there an easy way of automating it so that most of these things can be automatically applied? The like the leg no collision. There is. And then you can just adjust. There, you can automate it. The problem with automate. Oops. The problem with automating it is uh, it, you, we can have it automatically generate um, all of the uh, collision volumes exactly the same size as, as the bones, but then you get a lot of extra data that may not be needed by the game. So for performance reasons, we have these other tools, and the artist really has to balance what's best in terms of, of performance and um, uh, you know, appearance you know, within the game. So it kind of depends on the budget. So you can see here, we have these two collision volumes that, that we're going to want the jacket to collide against. It didn't quite get that high enough, but it's good enough for now. Um, so you can see when we play back, I did a decent enough job. Well, we got a little penetration right there, so I need to fix the, that collision volume. Probably make it a little bit better. But you can get, you get the basic idea. You can create these, these collision volumes that, uh, that prevent the, the penetration of the clothing. And we have tools 
uh, debugging tools that will show you exactly what's being cl uh, collided against, um, what per the performance implications of, of some of those collisions are, and exactly how to uh, how to address those you know, for your game. So that's kind of the, uh, that's the basic overview. This is what your typical artist would, would go through to, to create uh, these characters. An artist will probably take anywhere from an hour to three hours to do this for clothing. This is compared to days upon days of, of going back and forth with a programmer to, you know, to tune, in, tune specific parameters of the clothing and making sure it's just right. So this really empowers the artist to get their job done, to, to play with characters, to, to make things look just right, and to really create the best uh, user ex user experience uh, you know, for, for games going forward. So, so Steven, so, yeah, just to clarify on that point, so if you don't if if you don't have a tool like Apex, then you know every time you want to say change a collision variable or, or uh, you have to basically go back to the programmer. The artist has to give the model uh, back to the programmer and have them change that. Or that's right. Yeah, and, and you know a lot of game teams will, will optimize it. Maybe they've got some some. Uh, some file, text files they edit by hand to change various parameters. But if they really want to change anything that's that's more than just the very basic parameters, sure, they have to go back and get the programmer to actually implement that for them. But this is the first time ever that a physics tool has been integrated into a package like this for creating games to allow physics functionality to be used by the artist and created by the artist. Okay. It's a huge, huge um, uh, amount of effort that went into to developing it. And the demonstration Steven's showing you a really simple one. It's so much harder to uh, uh, to do this if you're actually having to program it, right? And this is, I'm sure Ashu made this point earlier, one of the big reasons why we've been working so hard with guys like 3D Studio Max and Alias, uh, excuse me, and, and Maya to get these kind of tools built into the into their applications, because then the artist can do it, and it makes it easier then for games to to adopt the use of physics technologies. Okay. And so we'll be uh, we're in, in beta with this right now. We have an, a number of developers that are that are actively uh, using it on, on their titles to really validate the pipeline. The Maya version uh, will be coming out in conjunction with uh, Apex later this year. Is this included in the physics SDK? This is included as part of uh, the Apex uh, uh, SDK. That's an additional license. Um, it's it. There's not a uh, license required. It's it, it's it's freely um, uh, available, uh, you know, for most developers. Uh, a source license um, it, it, uh, does cost some amount of money, but uh, the physics and Apex license will be tied together. So that's the end of this demo. Um, what I'm going to do is hand things over to uh, Sebastian Domine, who is going to talk about our Nexus GPU development platform. Yeah.